You can turn in your King James Bible to John chapter 6. I feel a need to talk about this subject. Our devil's walking among us. Um, there's some really, really evil people in our world right now. And you have to just wonder, you know, I hear people and they say, how can they even be a man or a woman? You know, it just, man, it's, how can these people do such evil things? Um, well, the Bible's very clear about people being possessed with devils. But I believe that there are actually devils walking with the appearance of a man. Let me show you why I say that. John chapter 6, verse 70 and 71 Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. One of you is a devil. Now, this is God manifest in the flesh, so there's no confusing it. There's no, well, you know, he was a disciple, he's just a man, you know, he didn't really understand, he just said, that guy's a devil. No, the Lord of glory is right here speaking and he says of Judas Iscariot he is a devil now that's pretty significant for a number of reasons think about this what was Judas Iscariot he was a disciple of Jesus and he's a devil uh, do you think the Lord knew that mm-hmm this was before Judas Iscariot betrayed him. And so they're all there and they're going out and they're doing ministry work and whatever else. And the Lord's looking over at him. He's a devil with the appearance of a man. Oh, I'm safe if I go into a church building. I'm safe if I hold up a little wooden cross or something, you know, exorcist type of stuff, Catholic things, you know. I'm, I'm safe around church people and religious people. Are they, you know, really? <laughs> you might want to rethink that. Um, personal relationship with Jesus Christ is what matters. John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 26 and 27. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, and when I have dipped it and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. And of course, Judas Iscariot is a type of the Antichrist, because the Antichrist, I believe, is going to be another devil with the flesh of a man. And Satan is going to basically indwell him as well. You say, how does all that work? I don't understand it all, quite frankly. Um... But these devils can take on the appearance of a physical man and they can be walking around on this earth and they can deceive people. And right there, again, you know, uh, verse 28, And no, now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. He told him earlier, one of you is a devil. And he's speaking of Judas Iscariot. Then he says, okay, here, Judas, Judas I'm going to give you the sop. You're going to betray me and go on out. The thing that you're supposed to do, go do it. And everybody's there, huh? What? I don't get it. <laughs> That's how good the disguise can be with these people, or with these devils, excuse me. Um, now, you know, in all fairness, let me just say this, uh, how many of these devils are actually walking around among us? Uh, you know, one in a thousand, one in 10 million, one in, one in five, you know? <laughs> You never know, you know, Martin Luther's song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, you know. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. Uh, this world with devils filled. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that kind of rings true to, to nowadays. But um, how many are there? I don't know. There's people. There are people that are possessed with devils. You can, you'll meet those. But when you're dealing with a devil that's walking around in the appearance of a man, a uh, little harder to pick that one out. I mean, the disciples, they're just, you know, why did he give that to Judas? I don't understand what's going on. I don't know, you know. It's really something to think about. Um, he said, could you give me a modern example of a guy that you think is a devil? 
Uh, I think the Pope, quite frankly, I think that Benedict especially, I mean, that guy just looked evil. You know, you look at his face you know, and everything. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, another one. You know, now these guys could just be possessed with devils too. I don't know. But they could also be devils. Let me show you about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. There's a reason I'm doing this study, so just stick with me. You know, we're not going to get into underground bases and, you know, the shapeshifters and reptilians and all that. We're not getting into all that stuff here. I'm just trying to say what the Bible says, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Did Judas Iscariot transform himself into a disciple of Christ? The disciples were also called apostles, you know, later on there. Did he transform himself? Yeah. Verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. They can transform themselves. You know, transformers, more than meets the eye. I remember when I was a boy, uh, the old Transformers way back in the 1980s, you know. <laughs> um, not a good thing, but, you know, what I'm trying to say is they're, they're transforming, all right. And not from a car to a robot or something. Verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Huh. What did the guys, the devils say to Jesus when he cast him out of the you know, legion or whatever? Torment us not before the time, whose end shall be according to their works. Probably nothing to it there. These religious leaders, these ministers of Satan, they transform themselves. They're not what they appear. Hmm. I'd be very careful about organized religion these people that are in organized religion. That's why I warn about the church buildings. Again, people meet together in the privacy of their homes or they have a barn or even a building someplace. Fine, just keep all the religious trapping stuff out of it that the Catholic Church has added to the scriptures. Follow the New Testament when you meet together. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, just to clarify my position again, I don't have a problem with people meeting together. That's totally fine. Wonderful thing. But uh, you start getting into the higher up religious circles, that's where the devils are. They transform themselves into ministers. Hmm. And I think that primarily it's in religion, but I think you get into some of these guys in the high levels of big pharma and whatever else, some of these guys that just have no conscience at all. You could be dealing with devils. Transformed to look like a man. And that's why you think, you know, I don't understand how these people could be so evil. They, oh, they wouldn't do that. You know, that's just so evil. They, nobody could be that bad. They could be if they're a devil. Hmm. So that sounds pretty negative. Well, I'm going to give you some good news now. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13. There's another type of uh, being that can also transform. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Angels can also transform into reg reg uh, regular looking strangers. Um, I believe I've seen a few in my life. I mean, I've told this story, I think, before, but I'll tell it one more time. My wife and I were at a post office the one time down in Pennsylvania, Stevens, PA, when we had, um, shortly after we got married and everything, and, and uh, we were there. And uh, <clears throat> we'd gone up to northwestern PA in Eldred, Pennsylvania, and we moved back down. We're staying at my parents, on my parents' property in my old wood shop is where we were staying, turned it into like a little apartment. And um, we had our ministry address as Stevens, PA. And we went to the post office the one time and it was right about the time we were moving to Maine and I was really down. I was really in some really heavy depression the one day. I had to sell some things that were very near and dear to me just to get the money to move. 
and uh, I just, you know, my spirit was just crushed, just broken. And this post office was right along the road, and you went right off the road into the parking lot. I mean, there was, it was an old time post office. They built things out along the road back in the old days because, you know, horse and buggies going by, you don't really need to worry about it. Back you go into the 1800s and on back. So there was, you know, no parking lot to this place. And so when you pulled out, you had to be really careful. I mean, most people just pulled in and they'd back out onto the road and it was pretty fast moving road going by. So you had to look and look and look and look. And so I went to back out and I looked and looked, looked in my mirrors, looked, made sure nobody's behind me and whatever. And I start backing up and bang, 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 you know, on the side of my truck. I thought, what in the, you know, and there's an old man walking up behind, walking up beside the truck. And he comes up and he, I had my bumper magnets on the, the back of the vehicle. And I mean, the guy literally rocked the truck with knocking on it with his cane. <laughs> and, you know, just boom, 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 you know, it really hit hard. And I, you know, stunned. And I looked out the window and he comes walking up and he says, hey, young man, he says, praise the Lord for all the things that you have on your, on your vehicle. You're exactly right in what you're doing. And he said, and praise you too to my wife. And he said, God bless both of you. Just wanted to encourage you. Walked into the post office. This little old man, and I thought, how can a little old man hit my truck so hard with his cane that he rocks the whole truck? And I looked, and there's no marks on my truck. I'm thinking, what in the world's that all about? And I looked and looked, there was nobody behind me. How in the world did the guy appear just, I mean, he appeared out of thin air weird experience really weird i mean just gave me chills just thinking how in the world did that happen and i've had a few other things you know um i've met you know different people and things different men not women but you know there are no female angels in the bible if you understand that seen some things and i never saw feathery wings either by the way they're just regular looking men and i think i wonder <laughs> So you say, what's the encouraging thing there? Well, if there are devils walking among us, there are also angels walking among us. Um, there's a spiritual reality out there, in other words. Some things that you can't explain. And now we shouldn't go out and seek that stuff. In other words, you shouldn't go out and say, you know, I'm an angel hunter or something, and I go around looking for angels. Well, they'll avoid you. You know, you might fall, you know, go for a fallen angel. They might try to get in contact with you, but uh, there's... The evil out there, these evil devils that are in that transform themselves, but I believe that there's also angels that can transform themselves to look like regular men. It's kind of an encouraging thing. Finally, let's go to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Little prophecy for the future here. Something that you have to remember going forward. Luke chapter 21, verse 25 and 26. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The future is going to be so bad in terms of fearful sights and whatever else that men's hearts are going to be failing them for fear. They're going to be having heart attacks. It's going to be that bad. Um, and the more evidence I see of, you know, you kind of look into all the stuff that's breaking down and you think, oh, wow, this is going to be bad. Uh, but there's a silver lining. You say, what could possibly be a silver lining? What could possibly be good about that? Um, what could becoming is more contact with the spiritual realm. So, but there's devils in the flesh, yeah. But there's also angels in the flesh. They can transform themselves and they can walk among us. And wouldn't it be something if you are there in the future and uh, things go really bad and whatever else and you see some guy needs help and you say, hey, stranger, come on in. Do you need something to eat? Oh, well, yes, thank you very much. Come on in here and you sit down, you give him food and whatever else. You could be entertaining an angel. 
You say, well, dispensationally, I think it's more for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, I would agree with that. But uh, it has to start at some point in time. We're in the beginning of sorrows right now that Jesus Christ mentioned. And I believe the working of miracles could start to come back. And I believe a lot more dealings with angels. It's all through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament too, by the way. What stopped? What happened? Well, we just became a little bit too, uh, too scientific. Oh, I can't believe that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to believe those things and whatever. There's got to be a rational explanation for this. I have to be able to figure everything out with my mind. There can be no supernatural world out there that exists. It's just, you know, this guy, yeah, he might be look totally evil, but, you know, you could reason with him or whatever else. Not if he's a devil. You're not reasoning with a devil. So, think about this as we go forward, brethren. Um, we're so used to getting unplugged from the spiritual world that we forget about that. And we just simply say, well, we're dealing with the physical here. This guy's evil and whatever else and, and things. And I'll just, you know, call my congressman and write a letter to the editor or whatever else to get this guy removed. He's a stupid Democrat or something or whatever people come up with. Um, or we could be dealing with a devil that's transformed himself. Uh, I don't have any help. Nobody's coming for me. Nobody's there to, to protect me and whatever else. <clears throat> I wonder who that stranger is that just walked by. Could it be an angel? Well, brother, I don't think in, a mo in our modern world, I don't think... It Why not? <clears throat> Why not? I mean, <laughs> you want to make all this stuff for the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, that's in the future. What are the angels doing? Just, you know, kind of up there in heaven waiting for the time of Jacob's trouble to get started so they can show up on the earth? Uh, no. The ministers of Satan, they're just, you know, the devils and whatever else, they just, after Judas Iscariot, there were no more devils until the time of Jacob's trouble, and then they'll start coming around again. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, <clears throat> um, remember, in our dealings going forward, we might not be dealing with people. You know, kind of like the They Live movie. Not recommending you watch that, but, you know, uh, everything just looks normal. And then, you know, the guy puts on the Rowdy Roddy Piper, the actor, you know, he, professional wrestler actor in the movie, and he puts on the glasses, you know, and he can see, you know, all these weird alien people along with regular people. And it's all these subliminal messages everywhere. Obey, you know, worship, you know, money is your God and all this other stuff. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. We, I believe, actually are dealing with physical devils in this world. And they can be really slick. Very slick. I mean, you're dealing with disciples of Jesus Christ. And they're sitting there. And they didn't have a clue what he was saying to Judas Iscariot. They didn't understand. Why is he talking that way to Judas? I don't know. So, um, our standard needs to be the Word of God and not popular opinion. Well, they've passed a law here, whatever. What if it's a law that was passed by a devil? You say, well, this law goes a con contrary to the Word of God. Hmm. I wonder what I should follow. Follow the Bible, follow the Scriptures. Get spiritual power, and the Lord can send His angels in there. And I'll tell you right now, you study what the Bible says about angels, uh, they can do a lot of damage. Angels are not ones that you want to mess with. Devils, get out of here. Go on, run, and they'll flee. They'll run away. Judas Iscariot, oh, I betrayed the innocent blood. I'm just going to go kill myself. Where's all the power at? An angel, on the other hand, oh boy, <clears throat> they can slaughter thousands of men in one night. Uh, we can have those on our side, those angels, going forward. So let's look to the spiritual and not to the physical for our power. That is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.